Hey, my name is Sean Sean. I saw art on SeanSean.co. Today we're going to react to Alice Bareil Art. So she has art picture here. She has one of her paintings at the top with paintbrushes painted. So that's really kind of a cute way to do it. You can see she's obviously a painter with paintbrush. So pretty obviously what she does. Um, I would stretch this. It's only kind of, it probably works on the iPhone as far as what this uh, headshot works, but you also have to make it work for your PC as well as um, across your TV. So you got to play around with it a little bit more to kind of nail this, I think. So you should have the art going all the way across and obviously ideal for iPhone, PC, and TV at the same time. So that's a little hard to work out, but I kind of like the idea of painting paintbrushes. That's really cool. She has a picker herself, pretty well close. You know, I obviously just want a, a shot like that because when you get on your iPhone, it's gonna be like this big. So you definitely want a small shot. I would probably do a smiling shot, uh, doing kind of like a, <laughs> it's not gonna sell art, people like a smile. <laughs> Maybe not in Russia, if you're from Russia, they always sell like, hmm. <laughs> yeah, different cultures, they don't smile. So that's kind of a thing. But yeah, I would smile if you can, unless your teeth are horrible. Looking down below, she has her intros, one of her latest videos. So that's always a smart thing. On the top, she has videos. Uh, that's not bad. She has her creative playlist. You can actually expand these and have these um, going across, which I would encourage, I think, because she does have a, quite a few lists. So I probably list those out. And yeah, probably do a popular playlist as well and put that at the very top because what happens is most of your viewers are going to be new people. So you want your new people to see the popular videos first. They're going to watch longer. You're going to have better view count later. So let's go to the first video. It's called Unveil the Beauty of Art. The secret of creating expensive ab abstract painting revealed. All artists need to know this. So that's kind of the finished product. So you get a feel for what the paint's gonna look like. So green and black is just an easy cheat code. You can just do this with red um, as far as uh, to make it darker green. I think I would encourage with the red more than black. I, I use black, black myself, myself sometimes, but Also using higher quality paint is very encouraging. So this is how to mix the paint. Let's get to the more to the painting. So she's kind of putting texture in there, which is really cool. Um, people like a kind of a texture background. She's probably using like some kind of paste. So not explaining, I would do a voiceover here. Uh, voiceover is definitely better unless you don't speak English, but you can still hire someone to do a voiceover if you have to in English. white so you have the dark to light contrast uh, let's skip a little more head guys so you got streak down the side let's scroll a little more adding kind of a forest scenery kind of look or maybe uh, broken wood slats maybe like if you painted on a piece of wood Probably do a red that's mixed with green, to be honest. It's gonna be a little bit closer. You want a little bit of a blend across the colors um, so that they're complementary. Red really stands out on top of green. It's good to have standout green color, but you probably wanna be a little bit closer in the green, maybe, maybe just a red with a little bit of green in it so it kind of you know, connects better. Got him some yellow. And she's protecting her table with a garbage sack, which I think is pretty smart. It doesn't look great on camera, but it's very smart as far as long term use of that table. Having paint everywhere, she's got gloves on. I don't personally wear gloves, but it's definitely um, helps keep the toxicity away from your skin, so that's smart overall. I like these detail shots, you get a little bit better feel of how the painting would look. So just dabbing around different paint techniques is kind of cool. Let's go to the final product. So here she's showing on a wall, which is really smart. Kind of has a sales tactic to attach to it. All right, let's go to the next video. This one's called Creating a Beautiful Abstract Painting Using Geometric Art. 
so she shows the finished product first so you know what you're getting and that is pretty a smart idea i would do a headshot with um, the artist introducing themselves because um, people buy the artist as well as the art so they don't just buy the i mean the art is spectacular maybe you don't care about the artist so much but and that's kind of cool she's kind of showing what color she's using as a background a little bit of a base here. Let's skip ahead a little bit more, guys. It's a nice size work she's working on, too. So I think she's gonna fill in that circle. And maybe she's not gonna fill in the circle. The sleeve looks really bad. I wouldn't have that kind of screen. I mean, having gloves is fine. Maybe she's allergic to the paint is why. I'm not sure. Um, but this blue clothing she's wearing is just really doesn't look good. I would just have just a white smock maybe or even a hoodie t-shirt or something like that. I don't know. It looks better, I think. You don't want to look medical in the sense when you're painting. It looks a little strange. Yeah, but that just means she's lost in the process. That's a good thing, actually, as a painter. Let's scale her head a little more. Let's give a little bit of organic feel to the... That's kind of a supremacist look almost, you know, from the 1920s, if you think about it. Let's scroll ahead a little bit more, guys. So I don't know what this painting's about, why this is in here. Let's... So I guess she's doing... I don't know why this painting is on the end. This makes no sense. It has nothing to do with her, so... I would cut this whole end off. This just is... You don't want to add someone else's art on the back of yours. If you're reviewing art like I am here, it makes sense. But if you're just doing your own art, just have your own artwork in there unless you're going to talk about inspiration properly. That makes sense. But since there's no voiceover, you don't know. I'm assuming it's maybe an inspirational feel, but a voiceover would really connect those two to make it make sense, I think. This next one is called Unlock the Secret of Blending Colors for Abstract Painting, Amazing Art Technique, and then some other tags. So pretty strong sale title. She starts with the finished product, so you get a feel of what you're looking at. That's pretty smart, you know, that's the painting it's going to be. It's interesting because these paintings are really small, but it looks big when she films it at first. So it's kind of, uh, not deceptive, but just pretty good camera angle, I would say. So this is just some simple technique. Let's skip ahead a little bit more kind of washing the colors together to give kind of a background, which is really smart. This is a really good technique with the water. I've done this myself. You can make some really cool effects when you do the water that way. She's really scrubbing that in. Now she's kind of enriching those colors again, going over them. Kind of makes them pop a little more. But that fading technique is really good, I think. Um, that really helps in a background of a painting. You want some grays, which those are kind of the gray color, so to say. Um, so you really want that in a painting to have that kind of chill feel. And then you want to kind of have a little bit of pop of black, a little bit of pop of white. But all your colors should be mainly in the gray scale somewhere in there. And just have a couple of moments of dramatic tension to kind of make that come together. Which I think she's achieving here. Let's scroll ahead a little bit. She's got a little bit more darker colors, kind of working those in. So adding a little more punch to that, that's kind of how you want to work. I, I've worked that way myself in abstract, just kind of make kind of a, what looks like a muddy background and then you slowly develop, slowly develop and just kind of take it up a notch, take it up a notch. So she's getting, adding punchier elements here. And this is really a smart technique as well as kind of um, hazing over some of those colors. So you have a lot of undefined color changes. It helps match uh, that painting to any color of the wall. So that's a really smart technique when you do abstract painting is have a variety of colors to kind of 
pull that together. So she's softening a lot of the colors with um, these unknown color blends. Um, so that'll really help stand out on any type of wall. So a little bit more ahead, closer to the end here. Again, she has another painting. I have no idea why. Um, if she explained the connection to the first one, it would make sense, but I just don't get it. Obviously, this may be a bit where she's pulling from inspiration. It's really cool, but it doesn't make sense to have it as part of your own painting. Uh, so a little strange here on the end. I'm not sure what the whole point of that is. Like if you had a voiceover that would explain like I want to get to these feel of these older masters, it might make sense. But since she doesn't, we don't know. Um, her art website, let's go to that now. Um, she doesn't really have a website per se, which is a really dangerous thing to do. Uh, one of the things she does have is an Etsy site so you can sell live here. She has Alice Burial Art, LA. I think this is her. It's kind of hard to say because this style doesn't match her abstract style and this doesn't match her abstract style. So a little bit of a danger here to have things that don't kind of come together with multiple styles. So it's obviously an Etsy style. You're just going to have picture and sight. This is really smart. She's also done some figurative landscape. I've done this myself, so it's a dangerous thing, but it's always smarter just to focus on one, like say an abstract only or landscape only or portrait only. It's easier to sell that way. It's easy kind of come together. The dangerous thing about having an Etsy shop, for example, is you just, you can always go off of, um, you can find other Etsy sellers sometimes. Um, like you can go to the Myers, like you click here, for example, and then you go to Carrie's favorites. Next thing you know, I mean, next thing, you know, a couple clicks away and you get into someone else's website, which you don't want. It's obviously smart to sell on Etsy, but you want to have your primary website is kind of you own everything so you can point all your social media to your own website. But yeah, if you don't want to maintain a store on, you know, developing your own website, that's kind of a challenge and as well as getting people there is a challenge. So I always encourage people to do something like Etsy or Saatchi or eBay. That's always a smart thing to do because it has a register already attached. People already have high trust value. So it's a really smart thing to do. The other downside of so going back to the main page, the issue is here there's no blog, there's no video you could do. Like if you own your own website, you could have like your YouTube videos in Air Spirits. That's how I do my website. You can check that out if you want to have an example. But you can kind of customize your own website better. You obviously have to be in these markets like Etsy, for example. But once you get big enough and you get really large, you can just kill all this off and just go to your own website and just sell straight off your website. So that's an advantage of doing your own website eventually. Go check her out if you like. And if you'd like to subscribe, you can subscribe below. And I'll see you on the next Artist React video. Thanks for watching, guys.